Okay, so moving on to the agenda. So we do have a, quite a lot to get through here today. Um, today we'll be looking at the new, or not so new now, uh, T4S series from Yealink. We'll be looking at their new T5 series products. We'll look at their new audio conferencing solutions, a new upcoming decked base station, and we'll also look at a couple of demo programs and trading programs that Elia are running uh, throughout the next couple of months or so. And then we'll end today's webinar with an open Q&A session. Now for the Q&A session, if you do have questions, all you need to do is raise your hand in the in the Q and A um, or in the sorry in the Go to Webinar panel, and what I'll do is I'll unmute you, and then you can you fire your questions away, um, and then go from there. Okay, guys, looking at Yalink's new T4S series products, as you can see from the pictures, they basically look exactly the same as the previous T4 P or G phones from. Yealink. So just quickly, I'll run through. So the T41S replaces the P, T41P, T42S replaces the T42G, the T46S replaces the T46G, T48S replaces the T48G. Now what I haven't got on the slide here is the T40P and G. So the T40P is now being replaced with the T40G. So basically the only difference between those two models is that it's now gigabit. Okay, looking at some of the new important highlights of the T4S series. So we'll look at these in um, more detail on the next slides coming up. So we'll look at the design factors, the audio enhancements, the new supported Opus codec, USB ports on the phones, the unified firmware, the, the performance um, increase, and also the hack or the hearing aid support as well. Okay, so Yealink's elegant design. So the T4S series has kept the T4 series design. This design has been really appreciated by the Australian marketplace. So Yealink have continued on with that design. As we know, they are great looking phones. Um, and as we've seen over the last couple of years with the T4 series, a lot of people have moved away from the T2 series and started taking on the T4 series. They are a, a much nicer looking phone from Yealink. Okay, looking at the audio quality improvements. So what they've done is they've added new components into the handpiece of the phone that improves the audio quality. And what they've also done is they've rebuilt the whole speaker component of the T4 series phones as well. So this gives you better acoustic performance when running the phone on its uh, speaker phone. Okay, I'm not sure if you guys know much about Opus, but Opus is a new or fairly new codec that's an open source royalty free codec. So nobody has to pay fees to use this codec. It is a scalable codec that can actually scale from narrowband to wideband based on the amount of bandwidth that you have available on your connection. So this codec is, as it is still fairly new, a lot of uh, carriers and things, or ITSP and VoIP suppliers aren't yet offering Opus, um, but it's definitely gonna be a codec of choice in the future. Now, people that are using it these days or are migrating to that codec um, currently are definitely the carriers um, a lot of the carriers now uh, need to make sure that the products support Opus, otherwise they won't even bother looking at it. Okay, so the, all of the T4S models now support the Otis, Opus codec. 
Now, as we know, the T46G and T48G always came with a USB port. So what Yellink have now done is added that USB port support on the lower end phones. So the T42S and the T41S now support a USB port as well. So using that USB port, we can add Wi-Fi connectivity, we can add Bluetooth connectivity, we can record directly onto that USB stick directly from the phone rather than doing recording on the PBX side. And in future firmware releases, it will also support USB headsets. So now, just recapping that, not only do the T46 and T48 models have a USB port, so do the lower end models, the T42S and T41S. Okay, another great feature that Yellink have implemented for these models is a unifer, unified firmware. So what that means is one single firmware file can be used to upgrade the firmware in all of these models. So all you need now is one file. So previously with the, four, uh, the four T4P and G models, each individual model had their own firmware file. That has now been replaced with a single firmware file that can be uploaded into any of these models. Now, as well as the firmware, the auto provisioning templates are now unified as well. So a single auto provisioning template can now be used across all of the models. This makes it a lot easier for hosted VoIP providers, ITSPs, when they're setting up their provisioning capabilities, um, for the phones, this makes it a whole lot easier and also a whole lot easier to manage the firmware files as well. Okay, so the CPU has been upgraded in these phones as well. So not only is it giving the phones more power to process uh, advanced codecs such as Opus, but it's also maximizing the usability of the phone by increasing the speed of the actual phone's interface. Okay, and as I said before, these the actual handsets on the T4S series are now HAC compatible. So that makes it a lot easier for the hearing impaired to use the Yelling phones and still have a um, an easy to use and um, be able to to hear the other end quite clearly. All right, I won't go through every single spec here on this slide, but just looking at some of the main specs of the T48S, as we all know, the large seven inch color screen or touch screen, I should say, very user friendly, very easy to use. We also now see that um, the the phone now supports, as I've said, the HD voice via Opus codec. Now the phones also support G722 HD codec as well. Uh, USB support for call recording. So previously in the old models, it was purely for the BT40 or the WF40 Wi-Fi and Bluetooth modules. So we now have support for call recording as well. Um, and as I said, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. T46S, so the main um, differences here from the older models are the, the Opus codec and then the support for the WF40, BT40 and USB call recording as well. Okay, T42S, again, the Opus codec. Uh, this is very important for those carriers and ITSPs. Uh, we also have the built-in USB call recording and now the support for WF40 and BT40 Wi-Fi and Bluetooth dongles. Now there's no, I don't know of any of the time frame yet for the actual USB headset support, but I know it's definitely coming um, later this year. T41S, again, same additional new features, the Opus codec support, the USB core recording, WF40 and BT40. Now, if I didn't mention before, which I don't think I did, so these lower end T41S 
T42S also support EHS as well now as well. Okay, so not um, a lot of differences between the T40G and the, or sorry, the T4GP and the T4S, but those seven uh, improvements are definitely things that we can use to help sell the T4S products. Okay, now looking at Yalink's latest and greatest T5 series products. As you can see from the picture on your screen, they've gone for the look of the of the T49G. Now the T5 series products have been released to the market as a higher end phone to the T4S. Um, as we all know, Yalink have um, been looking at competing with Polycom for many, many years. Um, they've done a great job in that lower end market, but some of the enterprise customers have, uh, are still sticking with the Polycom phone. So these T5 series products have been released to try and penetrate the enterprise market space. Okay, so looking at the T5 series, again, HD voice and video. So the video support is only on the T58V model. So the two T58A, T58V and T56 are all Android based and the T54 and T52 are Linux based IP phones. So as Yalink have always done, when they release products to the market, they make sure they're easy to operate, easy to control, and easy to deploy. So the same unified firmware templates, same auto provisioning templates, um, so it makes it really simple to deploy these IP phones. Okay, looking at the user friendliness of the T58V and A, so the viewing angle of the screen has been enhanced. The actual uh, visual field of the camera also allows you to have um, multiple people sitting around the video phone and all of them being able to be seen. Um, and again, the camera, HD camera, so 720p, not full HD, only 720p. Um, and then we've also got the seven inch capacitive touch screen as well. Easy to operate and control. So the large seven inch touch screen on the T58A, V and T56. Uh, being Android, being touch screen, it makes it easy for users to use the phone, navigate around the phone, makes it very similar to those people that have used Android mobile phones. So the screen has a really high resolution, really easy to use, really nice looking phones. Okay, so the T58AV and T56 all have Wi-Fi built in to the products. They have built in Bluetooth as well. And these phones are already supporting USB headsets as well. And what we can also do with these phones is actually pair our mobile phone to this phone via Bluetooth. So not only can we synchronize contacts, but we can also make a call from the phone that will dial out via the mobile and vice versa. Make a phone, make a phone call from your mobile, which will dial out via or use the audio of the T58 V and A. Okay. Android. So we've seen a lot of Android phones out on the market for some time now. So Yalink have decided to move into this market space as well, which I think is a great idea. Um, we've had lots of requests over the years for Yalink to bring out an Android phone. When are they going to bring it out? We need an Android phone. Now it's here. So Yalink have, um, have released a great looking Android phone. Um, the Android version is 5.1.1. So it's a, it's a fairly newish version of Android. Um, and what they've also done is they've built the hardware um, with enough power 
to be able to upgrade these Android um, versions in the near future as well. So we've got built-in browser support. Um, another great thing I, I think, think with uh, or having the ability to use an Android phone is the ability to customize the background, add your logo onto the phone. You know, some of the problems we had with the T4 series products is, is adding logos and the difficulty in adding logos. Using the Android um, phones it makes it really simple. Uh, add different um, screensavers to the phones. Now you can use the screensaver functionality to use advertising for your clients as well. You know, you can you can upload your own screensaver files and actually advertise your business on your customers' phones. And another great feature is also the support for the door phone, um, which I'll look at in a second. Now, in terms of using third-party applications on the phones, now it's not as simple as some other phones out there on the market. Um, it is a little bit complex to add applications, and I think Yalink have done this to stop end users installing their own applications on the phone, bogging the phone down with, with you know, tens or hundreds of applications, and then wondering why the phone isn't performing as well as it used to. Um, so the way that we need to upload apps now is via provisioning files. So what we'll do is you download the APK files of the apps that you want to load onto the phone, and then by using auto provisioning, we can upload those apps onto the phone. Now initially, Yalink have locked that down to only us distributors and also you resellers being able to, to add apps to the phones. Now they were gonna make it even tighter again um, and only allow you to upload approved applications, but I think they've moved away from that now um, purely because of the, the demand of the market to, to have that flexibility to up, upload whatever apps that they, they wanna, wanna use. And again, the reason for that was they didn't wanna bog down that phone. They didn't wanna get complaints from customers that the phone's now running slow because they've uploaded a dodgy application that is causing memory leaks and, and things like that on the phone. Um, so yeah, so they've, so customized apps, they can definitely be loaded. Um, we just need to be a little bit careful on what we upload to the phone. Um, and by locking that down to only be able to do that via auto provisioning, I think that's a, a good way that Yalink yeah, have, um, have progressed there. Okay, so door phone capability. So as I spoke about before, so rather than configuring a BLF key or a speed dial key on your phone to unlock the door from a, from a call from a door phone, what happens is if you get a call from a door phone, a function key will appear automatically that you can program obviously with the, with the correct ATMF tones and then you, you can actually unlock the door um, from the push of a button. So very, very similar to a BL or speed dial key, but as you can see on the screen here, it actually appears in the center of the screen where it's easy to see and easy to use. Okay, we talk about HD voice and video. You know, we support those Opus codecs again, G722 HD codecs as well. Um, now what they've done with the mic and speaker placement is also a good thing, which I'll look at shortly as well. Um, so they've they've made sure they've positioned uh, the mic and the speakers in, in spots that allow for good voice pickup and good audio quality. Okay, so they've enhanced the speakerphone. So they've uh, created a sealed sound chamber for the speaker, which gives it improved audio quality. And what they've done is they've actually placed the microphone at the back of the screen, which allows for three six or at the back, but at the, at the top of the screen, which allows for three sixty degree voice pickup. You know, sometimes you might be have the phone on a desk and there's people all around the phone that are trying to talk and, and join into the conversation. Um, and this allows uh, good voice pickup for all parties. 
Okay, when we're looking at the video side of these phones, so video collaboration, being able to view a presentation from a, uh, a video conferencing system that the phone is dialed into uh, is a great feature as well. So, you know, the screen size is big enough for you to be able to look at the presentation. Okay, you might not be able to read all the writing or the text on the presentation, but you can see what's going on and the person who's going through that presentation, you will know you understand what they're talking about. Okay, so looking at the key takeaways from the T5 series, the T5, mainly the T5 uh, 58A and V here, so it's an all-in-one video and voice solution. As the other say, heads up color screen and adjustable elements, being able to adjust that screen, adjust the camera um, to position wherever you're seated. The seven inch touchscreen, easy operation and control. Again, those and the Android OS. People have been waiting for a long time. Being able to upload third party applications is a, is a big selling point. And another one is the built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. No need to use the BT40 or the WF40 dongles. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are built into the phone, standard out of the box. And then of course, the enhanced HD video and audio experiences that come along with all Yaolink phones. Okay, so just looking quickly at some of the highlights of the T58V. So as we know, the seven inch, High resolution capacitive touchscreen, the 720p HD video camera, Android version running 5.1.1, built in Bluetooth, built in Wi Fi, USB support, so up, being able to upload photos, screensavers that I talked about before, also a bit doing the call recording onto the USB, uh, Opus codec support, 16 VoIP accounts three-party video conferencing, five-party audio conferencing, and those conferencing features are built into the phone. You don't need a third-party conferencing application to use that, that's built onto the phone. And then of course, we've also got the EXP50 color screen expansion module support as well, which we'll look at shortly. And these phones are also wall mountable. So all T5 series phones are wall mountable. And again, as like the T4 products, the wall mount brackets are optional and it's a, a, an additional device that you need to purchase. Okay, T56A, exactly the same as a T58, except no camera and no video support whatsoever. So just before I do go on with this, so the T58A and V, so two different models. A is without the camera, V includes the camera with it. But you can, if you go out and buy a T58A, and then later on go, oh, I really should have bought the V, I need a camera, I want to do video conferencing, you can buy that camera separately. So that's the Cam 50 that you can purchase individually if you need to. But you can't put the Cam 50 onto the T56 at all. T56 does not support video. Other than the video difference, the T56A is exactly the same as the T58. Same screen size, built-in Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, Opus codec, um, yeah, exactly the same, basically. Moving on to the T54S. So these lower end T5 series products are not Android. These phones actually use a Linux operating system. So again, Yellink have moved away from their own proprietary operating system and have introduced a Linux based operating system for these lower end T5 series products. So the T54 has built in Bluetooth, but not built in Wi Fi. So if you want to add Wi Fi to the phone, you need to use a WF40 Wi Fi module. USB port built in for recording and USB headsets, again, supports the codec. Now the, the firmware and the auto-provisioning templates 
So I think I said before it was the same for T the whole T5 series. That's actually incorrect. So the, the, the firmware and auto provisioning files are identical for the 54 and the 52, but the 56 and the 58 have their own um, firmware and, and provisioning template files. Again, up to 16 VoIP accounts. All the T5 series products have uh, gigabit interfaces, POE of course, <coughs> excuse me, and again, the color screen expansion module support. And the T52S, so a smaller screen, again, built-in Bluetooth, Wi-Fi via the WF40, USB port again for recording, and USB headsets and WF40, of course. Opus, paperless design, um, so programmable BLF keys, and again, supports the expansion module. So all models, all five series models support that EXP50 expansion module. And it doesn't actually say here on the screen, but as I said before, all T5 series do support wall mount brackets. But again, they are optional. All right, so I, quick, I spoke quickly about the CAM50 and the XP50. So looking at the CAM50 specs, it supports the T58B and A, it's a two megapixel camera, 720p at 30 frames per second, plug and play, simply plug it into the phone, the phone automatically detects it and enables it and away you go. And also has a built-in privacy shutter as well. So if you do shut it, it does turn off that camera. The T50, sorry, the EXP50 expansion module. So it's a 4.3 inch color screen, not touch screen, color screen. Um, icons are all color as well. So it has 20 physical keys, but you can then switch between pages. And then we can also support up to three daisy chain modules hanging off any of the T5 series phones. Okay, so just quickly looking at the pricing of the T5 series compared to the T4 series. Um, I'm not gonna read out all the prices here, but you can just take a look quickly and have a look. I think the main thing that I wanna highlight here is the big price difference or price reduction in the T58V from the T49G. The T49G was built with Harman Kardian audio and all the bells and whistles. Um, now the, the T58V running Android still has all the great audio quality, but a fraction of the price. Now, as I said, these presentation slides will be available for download later on. Um, so if you're looking at the pricing, now just to mention here also, the pricing, this pricing here is all SRP based pricing. Okay, so I spoke about USB headset support and wireless headsets, of course, via, um, via the Bluetooth or built-in Bluetooth support and the um, BT40. Now I'm not gonna list every single um, headset that we have available that Yelling supports. But what I have done, if you look at the handout section in your GoToWebinar uh, panel, what you can do is you can download, I've actually uploaded their Yearlink's latest compatibility guide for headsets. So it includes USB headsets, Bluetooth headsets, wired headsets for all different models. So feel free, download that PDF document, keep it handy. It's, it's, um, it really is handy to be able when um, talking to your customers and determining what headset is gonna work with what model yelling phone. All right, guys, moving on to Yalink's latest conference phone release. This is quite exciting. We've been, um, you know, the CP860 now has been around for a long time. It's good to see Yalink have um, ventured into um, some new audio conferencing options. I know that um, having a single conference phone being the CP860 was a little bit limiting. Um, so 
Yarlink have now released two new models, which is fantastic. Okay, so the two new models are the CP960 and the CP920. So just a quick product overview. Again, enterprise grade conference phone designed for mid and large size meeting rooms, HD audio support, wide voice pickup, and Yelling's built-in noise proof technology, which eliminates background noise. <coughs> Excuse me and a new stylish looking Y shaped design. And as Yalink say, Y for Yalink. So the tablet target applications for the CP960 and the CP920, mid to large size meeting rooms, smaller huddle rooms, and also conference halls as well. Okay, the voice pickup. So on the CP960 specifically, the voice pickup has been significantly enhanced from that of the CP860. So we now have a 20 foot voice pickup range with 360 degree microphones. Now the CP, CP960 also comes as what, or how Alloy have named it, the CP960-WM, which um, comes with two wireless microphones. So the wireless microphones use DECT um, and then and the microphones themselves have a, an additional 10 foot voice pickup as well. Looking at Yaling's noise proof technology. So what this does is it reduces background noise but not only does it do that it also mutes the mics when the mics have not detected any human voice. So that's going to eliminate a lot of background audio issues as well. Okay, so the CP960 Android again. So 5.1.1 version Android, same or similar functionality as the T58 and T56s, we can upload our own applications again. So things like applications like Skype for Business. Now Skype for Business is a, is a perfect example. Uploading the Skype for Business application, straight away it turns this phone into an SFB compatible speakerphone. So built-in five-party conferencing, simple to add participants into the conference. As you can see from the screen, all you do is you click on the invite button, dial a number, bang, they're in the conference. Again, this is five party conferencing built into the phone itself. So you don't need a third party conference server to do this, this is built into the CP960. So we also have Yalink Active Speaker. So what it does is it actually detects where the audio is coming from because the unit has three built-in mics, it detects where the audio is coming from, gives priority to that microphone and actually mutes the microphones that aren't being used. Another really, really cool feature of the CP960 is the hybrid what or what Yalink are calling is the hybrid UC meeting capability. So what we can do, same as the T50 or the other Android phones, we can pair our mobile phone via Bluetooth. So what we can do is we can actually be on a mobile phone call and pass the audio through to the conference phone and use the conference phone for, as the audio device for your mobile phone or what you can also do is from your from the conference phone, dial a number, you can then select whether to dial out via SIP or dial out via your mobile phone. Now the CP960 also has a built-in USB port that you can plug into a PC to use as a conference phone for your software-based uh, voice and even video applications. Now, the best part is what we can do is we can actually conference 
all of these three audio signals together. So what I can do is I can be, I can have the mobile phone paired to the CP960 using CP960 as the audio device for my mobile phone. Then I can make an additional call via SIP on the conference phone to another party and actually conference those together as well as also being able to conference a USB connected soft phone as well. That's a really cool feature. All right, just looking at some of the features of the CP960, again, HD voice, 20 foot voice pickup, five inch multi touch screen, three microphones built in, PoE powered, uh, five way audio conferencing, built in Wi Fi, built in Bluetooth. And as I also said, connect to your PC via USB as well. And it does support call recording via USB. And if you do buy the CP960-WM, then you also get two wireless mics included as well. If you don't go for that option, those wireless mics are available uh, for purchase separately. Now we also do have wired mics available. So the CPE90 are wired mics that are also available if you don't want to use the wireless option. So just having a quick look at the CPW90 wireless microphones, as I said, can either come included or can be purchased separately. 10 foot pickup, uh, capacitive touch mute button as well. So if you press mute on the microphone, it will mute the whole phone as well. Um, long battery support, 19 hours talk time, 11 day standby time, and also utilizing the deck technology um, for, for quite large distances as well with the wireless mics. Okay, so now I'm sharing a couple of products that aren't actually released yet. So we're, for the CP920, we're looking at a release date or an announcement date of September 1 with an actual product release date of September 20. So you guys are getting a bit of a head start here. Um, so that's, uh, yeah exciting stuff. Okay, so the CP920, again, HD voice, 20 foot voice pickup, three built-in mics, 3.1 inch LCD, PoE powered, built-in Wi-Fi, built-in Bluetooth, USB core recording. So this unit here doesn't run on Android. This is not an Android-based phone. This is you know a standard SIP-based IP phone. So the CP920, has been released to um, replace or eventually replace the CP860. So just to give you a heads up, by the end of the year, the CP860 will be end of life and will be replaced by the CP920. So they will run side by side um, from what, from, so from September 20th when it's officially released until the end of the year, and then the CP860 will be discontinued. Okay, you're looking at a little bit of a comparison between the CP920 and the CP860. So longer voice pickup range, larger LCD screen, built-in support for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Um, the only difference is there. And then looking at this one, so the CPN10 support on the CP920, CP860, I'm not sure if a lot of you are aware of the CPN, uh, CPN 10, but I'll talk about it in a second. Um, 3.5mm uh, output and input ports, so they've actually been taken away from the CP920. So the 3.5mm in input is only available on the CP860. Uh, the hybrid UC meeting support. Uh, now, when they talk about that on the CP860, I'm assuming they mean by using the 3.5mm uh, port to connect to your mobile phone and then uh, conferencing in or audio mixing with a SIP based call. Whereas with the CP920, it will be via Bluetooth or via the USB port. Uh, easy meeting invitation support. 
and then also Yelling's latest and greatest noise proof technology. Okay, so the CP10. Um, yeah, so it's, a, it's been available for quite some time. It's it's available from Alloy. It's been in our price list for a while as well. Um, I know that it hasn't it hasn't been much of an uptake with this product. But what it allows you to do is simply plug in this USB device into your CP860 or the CP920, and it actually converts the conference phone into a PSN phone. So if you have customers out there that are using PSN, they haven't moved to VoIP, they need to replace their conference phone, but they're not looking at moving to VoIP just yet, we can use the CP10 to put in line to future-proof their conferencing phone so they can stick to use PSN for the moment, and then when they're ready to move to VoIP, they can simply unplug the CP, uh, CPN10, plug in the Ethernet cable, and use the conference phone as a VoIP-based conference phone as well. All right, Yalink's new deck base station. So what we're looking at here, again, a new product, hasn't been announced yet. You guys are the lucky ones. Um, uh, available or announcement and the samples will be available from um, September 1. But what that means is that means that Alloy can order them from September 1. So we probably won't have them available uh, until mid-September. Um, so that's for the base station and the CP920. So they're stuck with the C, um, sorry, with the W56 handpiece. That's not changing. It's only the base station that's changing here. But what they are going to do is eventually phase out the W56P kit. So that W56 base station will be phased out and will be replaced by the W60B base station. And that will then become the W60P kit, which will include the base station and the handset. Okay, so major differences here is that the W60B now supports up to eight concurrent calls, eight handsets, eight individual SIP accounts, and it also supports the Opus codec. So the W56P or W52P base station, um, they were limited to five hand, handsets and four concurrent calls. So this is a, uh, a good improvement in that regard because we did get um, a lot of feedback about wanting to support more than the, the five handsets and the four simultaneous calls on the 56 and 52 Ps. So these base stations also support repeaters, so up to five repeaters are supported. Again, the major improvement here on this base station is the support for eight handsets, eight SIP accounts, and eight concurrent calls. And of course, the Opus codec that everybody loves, but not everybody uses yet. So that will, um, I'm sure, will will get increasingly more and more popular as, as time goes by. Okay, that's it. That's the, a wrap up of all Yelling's latest and greatest products. What I want to discuss now is some of the demonstration unit opportunities that Alloy are offering you guys. Now, as soon as Yelling release a new product, what we want to try and do is get that product to you guys to test, to use, to show your customers as cheaply as possible. So what we're, we're offering is heavily discounted products for you to test with. Now, Yalink do limit us with the amount of demo product that we actually have available. So you need to get in quick if you do want to take up these demo opportunities. Now, one catch for you to get this heavily discounted price, we need you guys to complete the product evaluation questionnaire. Now, there's really not much to it. It's probably, I think it's eight questions at most, Re probably take you, okay, half an hour of playing around with the phone and five minutes to complete the form. So it's really, really simple to do. Now, when talking about the demo products, these are limited to one model per, 
customer. Now, that's one of each model. So for, if Yellink release, you know, for instance, the T5 series, you can have one of each of the T5 series for demo um, testing. Now, the only variation to that is with the T58V, where Yellink allow up to two phones per reseller. And that's really uh, because of, or giving you the ability to test the point-to-point -point video calling capabilities of those phones. All right, so as well as the new product demos that we're offering, now you guys, if you are interested in taking up this demo um, opportunity, please talk to your account manager here at Alloy. If you don't know who your account manager is, send an email through to sales at Alloy and they'll put you through to the right person and you can then discuss your demo requirements. Now, another bit of a heads up with some early news that you guys um, are getting for attending the webinar is what we'll be doing is later on in September, we'll be offering a trading program for the CP960. So again, heavily discounted product for you to trade in or when you your or your customer trade in another vendor's conference phone. Now, sounds difficult? Not really. We don't actually want your old phone back at all. All we want to see is a photo of the serial number and MAC address of the other vendor's phone that you're getting rid of. And then what we need you to do is complete the trade-in registration form, which is only like five little things that you need to fill in. Basically, you're putting in your details, the details of the phone that you're replacing, and that's that. And you, so you can then keep that old phone. We don't need it back, you can keep it. And you still get access to the heavily discounted trade-in program pricing. Um, now, you can, guys can start talking to your Alloy account manager about Sorry, Alloy account managers about this. Um, not released yet, not available yet. Um, we're currently still working on the ins and outs of, of the trading program, and it should be available by mid-September. So if you do have customers in mind that are looking at upgrading their conference phone, this is gonna be the perfect opportunity. All right, guys, that just about wraps it up. Um, Yep, that's that's all from me. So what we'll do now is we'll look at some questions. I know that was a lot to go through. I've got a whole heap of questions here on the in the question panel. So I'll begin from the from the top. Um, so before we do open up the mics and stuff, I'll just quickly run through some of these questions. Okay, so the first one is the session being recorded. That's an easy one. Yes, it is. So. The, the webinar is being recorded and it will be available from the Allo website early this afternoon. Okay, T48S, or sorry, T48S Guide for Business Edition. Okay, Ahmed, yes. So at the moment, the only Skype for Business phones that are certified by Microsoft are the T original T4 series, so T41P, T42G, T46G, T48G. So yeah, so those phones are still available. We have limited amounts of those products in stock here that we've actually put aside for Skype for Business. Now, if you do have a customer that does need that older style product, we look, we can we can still offer the, offer you that product. Now, in regards for the Skype for Business support for the S series phones, yes, it is coming, and yes, it's not far away. So I have um, beta software that I've been testing here for the last three or four weeks. Um, so far, testing is going really well. Uh, with, or as part of the Microsoft testing, Yalink need to to um, have a number of minutes tested on the SFB platform before they'll actually approve it. Um, so Yalink, we're are almost at that point now. So we're looking at a release date or a Microsoft certif certification date of around the end of September. And that'll be for the whole S-series uh, models. All right, is there going, next question, is there going to be support for multiple USB or a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi adapter? Uh, actually, I'm not quite sure I understand what you're asking. 
uh, is there going to be support for mul multiple USB support or a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi adapter? Okay, so I'm assuming maybe you want to support both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi at the same time. Um, unfortunately not. Um, if the phones do require a uh, the BT40 or the WF40, it's one or the other, unfortunately. Okay, next question from Michael. When using T40, the T48S with the Wi-Fi um, support, is cable required? Okay, so an, an Ethernet cable isn't required, but we still need to power the phone. So if you're not using the plug pack for the phone, then we need to use Ethernet to supply PoE to the phone. So you still need to have a cable connected in, one, in some way to power that phone. Okay, T5X phones. When we tested, we found the data requirements to be quite high for a video call. Is it possible to scale the resolution down? Yes. So in the settings, the video settings on the actual phone, you can lower the frame rate and the resolution. Um, look, I, I'm pretty sure, yeah, that's that's an option in the video settings in the web interface of the phone. Um, I'll double check that, Ashley, and let you know, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, that's possible. Okay, Cecile from Chorus Call. The T5 series, because the OS running on Android, can we install Android apps? Yes. Now, as I said during the presentation, Cecile, it's not, an, look, it's an easy process if you know how to auto provision Yarlink phones. If you haven't used the provisioning files for a Yarlink phone, then it can be quite complex. Um, but if you've done auto provisioning before and you've played with the Yarlink um, provisioning files, then it's quite simple. It's just a matter of downloading the APK file of the app you want to install using a couple of lines in the provisioning um, file and yeah, uploading apps is, yeah, is as simple as that. Okay, the door phone feature, does it require configuration via the PBX? Okay, again, still that depends on how you've got it set up. If you have got, if you're not using a PBX and all you're doing is a direct IP call between the, the IP phone and the door phone, then no. If you uh, have the phone and the door phone configured as extensions on your PBX, then obviously um, there is some PBX configuration required. Okay, so why did, another one from Cecile, why did Yellink invest um, resources in two different operating systems? The, the only thing I can assume here, Cecile, is to keep the cost down on those lower end IP phones, the T54 and T52. Now, because you know they are lower end phones, they're smaller screens. Having an Android OS on there just doesn't make much sense because you can't, you know, you can't really run a third party app on a screen that's quite small and that isn't touch screen. Um, that's that's my assumption anyway. Uh, next question from the Rev. Uh, is the T58V SFB compatible? Okay, so Yealink are working on T5 series SFB certification. Now, I don't have a release date for that, but a way around that is to upload the Skype for Business application onto those phones. Now, okay, the phone's not certified, but of course the application, seeing though it is a Microsoft application, is certified. So you can get around that. Um, and the differences between T42S, 41S, and the 52s and 54s. Look, I think the main the main differences is the look and feel of the phone. Um, look, the T5 series, like I said, really intended for that enterprise customers. Um, without going back through the specs again um yeah it's, it's I, I can't really answer that question um you know there is obvious obvious differences um now it just really depends on you and your customers whether you like the look of the t4 series or like the look of the t5 series um i'll just leave it at that um can we add zoom to the cp960 uh, i'm assuming so if Zoom have an Android application that I can't see, why not? It should work fine. 
A uh, question here from Peter in regards to any advantages for going for a wired mic? Look, I don't think so. Um, the, the, because the phones use DEC technology, we all know that audio quality with DEC is, is, is fantastic. So I can't see any limitations on, um, on going for the wireless mic over the wired mic. Um, obviously, you have the headache of the wires when using the wired mic, which can get tangled and, um, and also makes the conference um, table look a bit messy as well. Okay, so there's a question here from Craig. CP960 running Skype for Business firmware. Sorry, Craig, I didn't actually say, or if I did, I apologize. I wasn't meaning the Skype for Business firmware. Um, it's just Skype applications that you can run on that phone. So Skype or Skype for Business, you can run on that CP960. Okay, moving down the list again. So compatibility with 3CX. I know that 3CX are working on the T5 series. I don't know for sure whether it's supported yet. I'll have to look into that for you. Uh, and W60 definitely not yet because it's not actually even released from, from Yearlink. But I can guarantee that 3CX will definitely support all of these new, new phones. Um, whether it's supported in the latest 15 point five service pack one release or not, I'm not 100% sure, sorry. Uh, next question, W60B, is it water dust shock resistant? Um, look, I would, I would say no, Narav, I haven't seen the unit yet, but I'm assuming no. Um, it's gonna be very similar to the 5652P in regards to that. Um, I know that they've, they've done a better job at cable management and the look of the, of the base station looks a lot nicer but I would say that it's not gonna be water, dust, or even shock um, resistant. Okay, Skype for Business, again, Skype for Business firmware for the new models. Like I said, T4S coming very, very soon. T5, T5 series coming eventually. Um, hopefully, sometimes later, later on, at, towards the end of the year, the T5 stuff. Okay, how do you calculate how much is being offered for old conference units? Okay, Robert, what we'll do, because a lot of that information um, is not really available yet or hasn't been released to you guys yet, um, I'm still working on all of that. Like I said, hopefully have that program running by mid-September. Um, so yeah, as soon as that's, a, that's ready, um, you'll, um, your cap manager will let you know exactly how that's gonna work. And we'll do an email out to you guys as well. Okay, a couple more questions. Okay, I noticed no mention of the T40 series. Is it being phased out? So Robert, at the beginning of the webinar, I'm not sure if you missed it, I did say that the T40P is being phased out and it's being released, uh, sorry, replaced with the T40G. The T40G is, has got no plan of being phased out. T40G is available um, ongoing now. Um, which mobile phones are supported by the CP9X uh, for Bluetooth? Look, any Bluetooth mobile phone will work fine. I don't know of any limitations with different um, phones. As far as I know, as long as it supports Bluetooth, should be fine. Uh, what is the status of the WMI? So the um, message waiting light, I'm assuming, or MWI, uh, light on the new ranges. <sighs> I think I need you to clarify a bit more, John. I'm not sure what and if there are issues with um, W or MWI on the new models. I don't know of any, um, but if there is, please let me know and we can find out um, what's happening there. Where do we, next question from Kingsley, uh, where do we get the APKs for Skype for Business and CP960s and 58s? So what you can do, just do a Google. Do a Google of Skype for Business APK file. You'll find, you'll find somewhere to download it. They're readily available on the internet. Um, okay, Osama, can we get the beta Skype for Business firmware? Yes, I can give you the beta firmware if you like, if you shoot me through an email. Um, so my email address, scott.young 
at alloy.com.au. Shoot me through an email, Osama, and I'll send you a link and you can download that beta firmware. Just remember, it's not certified by Microsoft yet. So if your customers are wary of using un uh, non-certified product, please don't do that in production. Um, but for testing purposes, no problem. I can give you a copy of that. And just to let you know also, in regards to that type of business firmware, being the T4S series, having unified firmware, it's one firmware file for any of the models. Which again, um, very easy to, to manage. Okay, Feng Yang, uh, will Bluetooth headsets cause crosstalk in call center environments? Look, it's the same as any um, Bluetooth technology. Look, I think, to tell you the truth, I don't know how many Bluetooth devices you can use in a single environment without before you do get interference. I know that Bluetooth has a lot of different channels that it can run on. Um, so without doing a quick Google to see um, the amount of, of, of channels that it actually uses, I can't answer that question, sorry, thing. Um, but it's just based on the standard Bluetooth technology. Um, so I'm assuming that the standards will be the same for the Yalink phones as with any other Bluetooth headset and, and Bluetooth enabled phones. Uh, does the PBX need to support video if you just want to use video and on? Okay, it's a, kind of a tough question, Paul. Um, it depends on the PBX. A lot of PBXs will support video codec pass through where it doesn't care what codec is used, it just passes a call through. Whereas other PBX do care about that. Um, so any of the PBXs that we sell, uh, so Epigee, uh, the Grand Stream PBXs, the uh, 3CX PBXs, all support video codec pass-through, no problem at all. Now, if you wanna do video conferencing on a PBX, then the PBX, PBX itself needs to be able to terminate that video, video codec call. So for instance, Epigee has a built-in video conferencing server. Um, so it can actually terminate video codec-based calls. So it really does depend on the PBX that you're using, Paul. Uh, <clears throat> are we interested in the unified provisioning options? Okay, will there be a webinar or training on this from LA or Yale? Look, um, Ari, look, that's something we can definitely uh, look at doing. Um, I don't have a time frame yet, but I will put that on my agenda to get a webinar done on all the new provisioning functionality and features of the Yaling phones. Uh, so hopefully we can we can get that done to, um, either in September or early October. Okay, comparison chart for the T5 series. Let me look at what I can do. Um, what we can do is oh, I can add um, those types of files to where the webinar um, can be or the recorded recording of the webinar can be accessed. So I'll look at doing that for you, Aksha. Um, moving down, moving down. What was the model of the PSGN converter? So the CPN10, so it's in the alloy price list. CPN10, so it can only be used with the CP860 and will be available to be used with the CP920 when it is released. Okay, question from Narav. Will the T4S users currently without the SFB compatibility be able to simply upgrade to SFB compatible by upgrading by end of the month for the new firmware? So yes, if you have a T4G product or a T4S product that is running standard SIP-based firmware, you can simply upgrade to the type of business um, firmware. If you contact Alloy, we can give you access to the firmware and access to the license file that's also required. Now, if you didn't purchase the Yalink phones from us, um, then there will be costs incurred to get access to that Yalink license file. But as long as you purchase the phone through Alloy, we're happy to give you the firmware and the license files at no charge. Okay, just had a, a quick note from John here at Alloy. He's saying that he recommends decked headsets for call centers. I'm assuming DECT has um, better support for multiple headsets in um, large use areas. Thanks, John. Okay, video codec supported on the 58. I'm assuming that, Robert. 
I don't know if it supports VP8. Definitely H.263, H.264. I'll have to let you know whether it supports uh, VP8. As far as I'm aware, it doesn't, but I will confirm that. Okay, guys, that's that was the last question. Let me quickly just go back to the attendees to make sure none of you guys are raising your hands and wanting to ask an audio question. Quickly go through. All right, no questions from you guys. All right, sorry it took a little bit long. I've gone over time, um, but there were a lot of questions, so I do um, appreciate all you guys asking questions. It's uh, the best way to learn, and I think it's the best way that we get more out of these webinars is by you guys asking questions and all of us, um, um, yeah, talking and, and getting the answers to these questions. Okay, guys. Thank you very much, really appreciate it. Thank you for your time and we look forward to our next webinar. Thank you.